Amen. Wow, powerful worship, powerful word, Maureen Haddon. Wonderful time of the year that we celebrate. Of course, we should be celebrating the life of Christ that he's provided for all of us through his name, through the cross, and through the blood. I think that uh, we have a pretty good understanding of why they took all the crosses down around America that they could. Because there's power in the cross. Power in the cross. It scared them. It really scared them. There's power in the blood of Jesus. The price that he paid on the cross of Calvary. Well, this, I guess, is to represent a crown of thorns. And uh, what I was going to share was really good works right into what I'm going to teach today. You know, that Jesus had the crown of thorns on his head being the head, paid a price. But most people don't know that in the ancient Hebrew, what I've been teaching and you've heard me teach about is that God placed them in the garden. You see, things grow when they're put in a garden. Amen. Placed them in a garden and then he placed them in Eden, but Eden is the church and that is God's garden. Come on, family garden, God's garden. That's a place that we grow. But what most people don't know is, in the ancient Hebrew, it teaches that around the garden and around Eden was placed a hedge of thorns. So I want you to just think about God's plan and his thoughts. So when you're planted in your garden family, and that family is planted in the garden of the Lord, you have a double hedge of protection. That's why the gates of hell will not prevail against those that are planted in the house of the Lord, the born again that are planted in the house of the Lord. I want you to just think about that. Right from the foundation of time, he set up a program of protection for his children. All in, explained to us right in the second chapter of the Word of God. Is anybody home? Bless God. So, Father God, I ask that you help me today as we share from the Word of God that, Lord, your Word might be life to everyone that hears it. Help me to share life and the goodness of our God and the blessing of our God. And, Lord, help me to share your heart concerning your church, your garden, your bride, your Christ. And we give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Well, I thought maybe I'd start out with something like, so there's a salesman, a salesman's traveling through this farm country, and he, he sees this mud hole up ahead, but he thought, man, I think I can get through it. And he drove out and got stuck, sunk all four wheels down in the mud. And it just happened to be a, a farmer came along with a tractor, offered to pull him out. So I'll pull you out for ten dollars. I said, oh, "That sounds cheap. Great, It'd be awesome." So we paid him ten dollars and pulled him out of the mud hole. He said to the farmer, "He said, uh, so you do this uh, once in a while? There's cars come through here." And he said, "Yeah, yeah, that make a little bit of money that way for the farm and all that sort of thing." And he said, "Well, does that take up a lot of your farm time?" He said, "Well, no, just the nights." Because nights I have to come out here and haul water in to make this mud hole. <laughs> and I think Washington's working real hard at building a bunch of mud holes for us Christians to get through. Amen, but the good news is God's pulling us through everything. We have victory in the kingdom of God overcoming all in Jesus' name. And you need to hang on to that, live by the kingdom, don't live by the world. Amen. 
And that is the reason that he provided the church with that kind of protection. And he wants his people to be planted in his garden where he can grow you into the bride of Christ, fully prepared for the great wedding feast, the end of the world, end of known world, or end of whatever time here, or how end times, or however you want to look at it. It is about the great wedding feast. Did you know that? Yeah. It's where the groom comes to take his bride. And the church was prepared as the place to prepare the bride. It wasn't your couch, it wasn't through television, it wasn't through all kinds of other programs and whatever. It was the virtual garden of the Lord, his church. So when I say God, Jesus died for the church, yes, he died for each one of us that would call on his name. But that places us as a temple, body, soul, and spirit, we've taught on, and he places us with Christ Jesus in the temple, the anointed one, Christ Jesus, in us, and then calls us together in his garden to grow into one bride. Jointly fit Together, you can't be together someplace else. It's a gathering, it's a getting together, it's, it's relationships one with another so that one cell gets along with the other cell in the body. Come on, somebody. I don't know if anybody saw Dr. No. Was it not such a great movie, but parts of his body didn't agree with everything that he was doing, so occasionally his hand would attack him and nobody... <laughs> because part of his body didn't agree with the other part of it. Strength is in unity. Strength is in together. Strength is in Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Strength, if we can believe that, we can all fit together. This morning, something that the Lord shared with me has nothing to do with the sermon, perhaps, but there I could name five religions, so-called religions, that still worship in a temple. They're still in the Old Testament. They haven't gotten to the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Is anybody home? Because now it's the church. Plum full of temples. Matthew chapter 16. You want to make friends here? Matthew chapter 16, verse... Again, I want to do this one just because it lays the groundwork for this whole series that I'm in, and that is verse 16, 17, and 18. We spent a lot of time on 18, 19... And he asks, who do you say that I am? And Peter voices and says, you are what? You are the, say it loud. This is where power lies. Say it loud. Christ. It's Jesus the Christ. The power, I don't care how we, we can pray in Jesus' name. I'm just talking about the power of God works through this anointed one, Christ. That's not his second name, not his middle name. That's just the anointed one that was sent to pay the full price for our flesh. The anointed one, the Christ. And he said, Simon Barjona, blessed are you because he called him the Christ. But did you know what Barjona means? Bar in the ancient Hebrew means son, and Jonah is A-H is the end. You have revealed, or the Lord has revealed to you that I am the Son of God. That's what that word means. Blessed are you because you heard something from the Father that I am the Son of God. You didn't know that? What's contained in the word is just so powerful, but you have to study it to be approved. Somebody say amen. amen. And so... And he said, on this rock, this rock, you've heard me teach, is the tree of life. It's Christ Jesus. It is 
the tithe, it is the tenth, it is the tenth letter of the ancient Hebrew. It is on this rock, Christ Jesus, or the Christ, I will build my church. That's why you need to be born again. The only way to the Father is He is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way of getting to the Father except through Jesus the Christ. Hello? And so it is, it is virtually the key. It's the keys to the kingdom called kingdom living or living in the kingdom here on this earth and then for eternity. That's life and life more abundant. So he wants us to have the keys to live an abundant life right here on earth. And how he set the training and the teaching up that faith might come by hearing and hearing the word of God which is neuro-linguistics, or hearing and hearing the word unless it's preached, is in his house where you are planted. And because you're planted, you're drawing on the living waters that flow from the word of God, not just from the pastor. It flows from the word of God, and it brings life and life more abundant to you. It's where the body, where the, where the bride is washed from all of the junk that the world puts in. Marie and I were talking just this morning about why your kids need to be in church. From the time they're born, stay in church so that it's developed. Just as Lincoln said this morning, your kids need to hear that you follow the Lord, then they might follow the Lord. Come on, somebody. And that you're in church, they'll stay in church. Mm. And live this good life. See, the schools and the world and the internet has your kids for, who knows, out of, out of a week, 130 hours perhaps, and you got them in church for one hour, but that's why David was able to say, it is better one day in the house than a thousand someplace else, because there's that kind of power in the house. Let's talk about the power in the house. Let's just think about it for a moment. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verses 2 and 3, it says that everything that is is held together by his most powerful word. Hello. What kind of power is in Christ? What, what kind of power is in Christ? Come on. If it holds what is together, that's some serious power. In fact, John chapter 1, verse 1, says that nothing was made except it was made by the Word, and the Word was God, and nothing was made except by the Word. How powerful is the Word? Then you got verse 14 in chapter 1 of John, and it says, the Word became flesh. This is Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, so he could pay the full price for our flesh. But do you see the power? Jesus said, even greater will you do than I have done. What's greater? We now have the ability to win people out of hell and into heaven simply by telling them about the power of Christ Jesus, the anointed one that paid the price on the cross of Calvary, overcame hell, death, and sin for them. That's our purpose is to win people, to tell them the truth. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's go to Psalm 92. I'm going to look at uh, two different things here. Psalm 92, verses uh, 12 through 15. Now, you know that David saw the death, burial, and resurrection because if you read the Psalms, he talks entirely about the price that was paid on the cross of Calvary and the Psalms all over the place. We know that he had a heart for the church because he talks about the church all the way through the Psalms. It's an, it's an amazing thing. And and it is important to grasp the relationship he had with God and God's house. Amen. He talks about it a lot. But here in 90, Psalm 92, 
He said something about salvation. Those that seek after righteousness, is what he's talking about. Those that seek after righteousness, those that are in the house of the Lord, those that they will flourish, means health, wealth, joy, peace, and highly favored. The best of life will come to you to those that are planted in the house of the Lord. No, no. Did you, I mean, th that should excite us, and it should say to all of those that are sitting on their couch right now, and I understand there are people that can't get to church. I understand that. that they have this problem, that problem, not feeling well, whatever. Don't bring your sickness here anyway, I mean, unless you're planning to get healed. But... We don't need to spread sickness. I understand that. But I'm talking about people that are handicapped, can't make it to church today. God knows your heart, that you're here with us. Come on, somebody. God understands all of that. I understand all that. But don't find excuses like the pews are too hard or the temperature is wrong or the sound is too loud or the parking is not good or the... Or somebody didn't say hi to you, or somebody rubbed you the wrong way, or, oh, you poor thing. You'd be under the Word of God, growing in faith. It's about the Word and the power of the Word to work in your life to make you and your family healthy, whole, and well-blessed. That's what he designed it to do. It's a place to get free from all the junk that comes from the world. It's happening to you six days a week and you got one chance on Sunday to come and hear the Word of God. Sit and worship with other Christians. Hang out with people that love God. And... Is anybody home? We've lost, unfortunately, in America the we're gaining it back. We've got to gain it back. This is a Christ nation. You know, that we, we've changed the word to Christian, but actually it's Christen. We are followers of Jesus the Christ. Come up with some other term. It loses some of its value because it includes people that aren't even born again. Oh, well. Okay, so that didn't go well. Okay, so we're planted in, the, planted in the house of the Lord, but it says even the old, I'm not going to include myself in that, but even the old will continue to be fruitful and will flourish and be fresh and energized if they are planted and stay planted in the house of the Lord. In other words, this is a, it has the power virtually to extend your life and extend your ability to be fruitful by being planted in the house of God. Now this goes on to do some really great things because do you know that it actually says here that we're blessed when we declare that God is good and there is no unrighteousness in in him. What is he, what is David, inspired by the Holy Spirit, who understands the church, the death, burial, and resurrection, and the birth of the church, what is he expressing to us here that he understood the goodness of God? That's why he was able to say, Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life because he understood a good God, not one that kills, steals, and destroys. The devil kills, steals, and destroys. And we can see his works all over America. You can see it all over the world. The light of the church has got to get turned up, baby. There's got to be some fire coming out of the church. Got to be some fire happening in our hearts. 
There's got to be some light that lights up and begins to influence people and get them back into the house of God so they can live a good life on this earth, not just eternity. You can say it's the end times, but what if it isn't? We're going to just continue letting the world go to hell? Or are we going to take our position, be the influence that we need to be? Reach the people that need Jesus so desperately. The world is full of them. So full of them. Unfortunately, they're full of other things. <laughs> Smile, you're on candid camera. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah, go look at Isaiah's, this one, I, I tried to get this one last week, uh, if you were here, I really messed it up, but anyway, Isaiah 51, not 52, and it was my fault, because when I wrote down 51, I slashed the bottom of the one going to the dots and the one through five, and so it looked like a two, so it wasn't Shelley's fault, it was mine. Anyway, okay, Isaiah 51, because this is so, so cool, because what's actually, he talks about here, the righteous ones through salvation, and the ones that seek after God's righteousness. Well, understand that David's writing this before the church is birthed, and he's, because he saw it ahead of time, and he's talking about salvation, he's talking about those that seek the Lord, and seek his righteousness, while wow, this no, you couldn't be righteous back then. Hello, because Jesus hadn't died, but he had received, oh, come on, somebody. He had received it because God revealed it to him way before. Wow, this is, I mean, when you, when you grasp this. And he says, what does he say here? He says, look to the rock that you were cut from, or hewn. In other words, we that are born again are a chip off the old block. Amen. Look to the rock. Look to the church. Look to the bride of Christ. Look to Christ. Look to the word of God. This is where you look for life. And then, he said, reflect on the hole or the pit you came out of. When I think about that, I go, oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. I said, when I think about where he dug me up, and I ain't telling him no more, but from the pit that he had gave his life for, that he would, I was just working on my guitar. I wanted to learn this song forever. Uh, finally, I, I figured out the chord progressions and working on I should just take lessons, I know that. But anyway, why me, Lord? What did I ever do to deserve someone like you? Whew. We didn't do anything. He did it all. So we could receive. Probably sometimes a good thing to ask, why me, Lord? I was asked that about why I'm here. Why me, Lord? I'm a lumberjack from northern Wisconsin. Born again, called of God. And I'm thankful for that. Because there's nothing I like to do more than what I'm doing right now. And I just think it's Hilarious, all of the things that the enemy has brought from heart attacks to cancer to stomach ulcers to kidney failures to Marines, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. We could li list mud holes that we've had to go through. Now I'm, I'm preaching and I can't read, really. What used to take 20 hours for a sermon now takes 40 but I refuse to quit because this is what I do. Yep. Oh, come on, somebody. And I got surgery on um, this Monday. It didn't happen last Monday, but this Monday. So we'll be, I'm actually seeing it pretty good today. That's awesome. So anyway, it goes on and says, 
He said he will comfort those in Zion. Did you know that Zion means salvation? He will comfort those in Zion, and he will wash. Hmm. He wants to wash us with the water of the word, and where he does that is in his church. Where the word is at work, and the Holy Spirit is taking the message I preach to a heart, and everyone in here is hearing something just a little bit different, because it will minister to your heart individually. That's how the Spirit becomes the teacher, the Holy Spirit. We're in the time and the age of the Holy Spirit, delivering the truth to the hearts of those that seek him diligently and believe that he is and that he rewards and does not destroy. Somebody say amen to that statement. Then it goes on to say, look to the Abrahamic covenant. And I think that's a really important word for all of us. Look to the Abrahamic covenant every day of your life. Because he said that he will bless you so that you can be a blessing. Somebody receive that. And that he would bless those that bless you. Hello? But he also said, under the Abraham covenant, I will curse those that curse you. Now that sounds like an interesting word when we believe our God is a good God, but anything that comes against the word and against Christian or Christ or his church, the word works as the power force that drives darkness back. Oh, come on, somebody. The word works. Come on, somebody blesses. But when someone curses, they put themselves in a position where all of hell is released against them because the enemy comes to consume whatever man makes good for nothing. So you don't think God's at work in this country? You better believe he is. And I come into agreement with his vengeance every single day. Because he gave me dominion and authority. And I think it's about time everybody does that. That what comes... mm, We've really gone to something. I want you to think about it a little bit. And then he goes on. I want to read this to you because this is going to be part of, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after. This is what the church is according to the ancient Hebrew. Listen close. It is the primal, receptive energy, the universal home, which means whosoever. It is the infinite womb, the church, (laughs) the bride of Christ, The infinite womb of fertility. Are you getting the picture? Infinite womb of fertility from which everything is nourished and born. Birthed. He planned his house as the infinite womb of the bride. I don't know, Lord, I'm trying to get this across. That here we learn and grow in faith by hearing his word and choose to believe he is and that he rewards. And then the word of God nourishes your soul and your heart and your fa- Oh, come on. I feel the anointing. It begins to work inside of you, building power. The power of faith, the power to change tomorrows, the power to heal your body, the power to bring everything, come on, change anything bad to something good, the power, the power that holds the universe together becomes suddenly available in the infinite womb of fertility where you're right now being nourished. And the potential of the birth of your dream. 
the birth of your tomorrows. Are being born. Whew. We'll be talking a lot about it in a couple of weeks. Bless God. Got anything out of that? Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Father God. I give you glory and I give you praise. I thank you, Father God, that you take truth to every single heart and those things that are not true. Be washed away in the precious blood of Jesus and let those that have heard develop a greater and greater value for the price you paid for the birth of your bride, the birth called the church, the land of preparation, the garden that you planted us in when we got born again to grow and be prepared for eternity with you. In Jesus' name. If somebody here has never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him right now. And some of those that are out there listening online, just receive Jesus today. Pray this simple prayer. Pray this simple prayer. Change my life. Change your life. Just repeat after me, dear Father God. I ask you to forgive me of all sin. I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen.